So this is the lion's mane that we found. And uh, I have never found lion's mane around here before. I have looked for several years and never found lion's mane and not really heard of anybody right around here uh, finding it. So I was so excited when my friend um, videoed this and showed me this. And he lives about an hour and a half away, but we're still kind of in the same climate. They don't really have a different climate than us, uh, so much so that, you know, sometimes they get um, a little more northern, a uh, little bit more maybe northern than us, but not much. And uh, But it is an hour and a half drive to their house, so... Maybe that's the difference, but I've never seen or heard of anybody around here getting this. And he hadn't. He didn't know. He hadn't. He come, stumbled across it and took a little video and showed me, and I was just shocked and excited. <laughs> and I shamelessly took half of it. So this is the lion's mane. I'm going to try to get really close so you can see the uh, hairy-like and just really really white and on the bottom is uh, a porous uh, like a smooth a very smooth porous but it is a um, um, more of a poly um, pore uh, but it's very smooth polypore and uh, there you go so i am going to slice this up i've sliced a little bit i'm going to slice this up and dehydrate it on a very low heat however long that takes. I don't know how long it'll take. I have not had uh, lion's mane before. I've bought it, but I've never uh, had one that I had to do myself. So, uh, so I'm just kind of figuring this out. <laughs> and I'm going to uh, dry it on a very low heat, and then I'm going to powder it. And I'm going to add a, a little, probably a half a teaspoon of the powdered uh, lion's mane in my coffee in the mornings and that's how i'm going to take mine you can make a tincture or uh, you can eat it it's it's fully edible you can just eat it any way you like um whatever you want to do with it but it is very medicinal so i am going to be putting it in my coffee in the mornings so there you go there's the lion's mane so there you go. I put the lion's mane in my dehydrator. I'm going to put it on a very low setting, the lowest setting it'll go, and uh, which I think is 95. Let's see. Uh, hmm. No, oh, it'll go oh, 90. I'm going to put this on 90, however long it takes to dry. Um, so it's, uh, I've tried to cut it kind of thin so it wouldn't take as long. And, uh, anyway, uh, lion's mane is good for, uh, they say for brain function, for memory, dementia, brain health. Uh, also good for the, uh, boost the immune system. And it is good for inflammation, which is one of the main reasons I want. Uh, I need the brain. I need the brain health too, um, and the memory, memory and dementia. Uh, I need all that too. But the main reason I want to use it is for inflammation. So there you go. And uh, nothing else looks like lion's mane, so you're not going to mix that up with something else. Nothing else looks like lion's mane. So, if you're foraging and you find this, you've got lines. All right. So, also, we're going to work on these turkey tail and put them in here. Uh, I'm putting them on top above the uh, lion's mane because the lion's mane is thicker and may uh, have a little more moisture in it. And the turkey tail has hardly no moisture. So, I'm going to put it on top. I was going to leave the turkey tail on this and let it just dry naturally. But... Since I'm going to go ahead and do the lion's mane, I might as well put the turkey tail in there. And uh, I'll just have it on the lowest setting anyway. Uh, now, turkey tail, there is a false turkey tail, but it has a darker underside and, um, and has uh, more of like teeth. 
where the turkey tail has is a polypore and it has a very white colored um, pore underneath. And uh, some have uh, gills, some have what they call teeth. And uh, a true turkey tail has the different colors. It has the velvety skin. It's a little bit flexible, but not, you know, not just soft. It's very thin, very thin, paper thin. And then underneath, it will have the polypore uh, white colored. Sometimes you'll see like a red color or a really dark color. You wanna look for a really light color, polypore. You wanna look for the real thin, paper thin and flexible. Now the, the turkey tail when it gets a little older will not be flexible, it'll be hard. And a lot of times you can still use that, but these are good and fresh. And, um, and then that velvety feel on top and that is a turkey tail. Um, not really good for eating because it's just a papery, thin, a little bit tough maybe, um, but medicinal. You can take these and dry them, and you could powder those up and use them in something. I will make a tincture out of the turkey tail. And uh, anyway, I got a really nice batch of turkey tail this time from the same place, the same friend that had the lion's mane that shared uh, had the turkey tail a whole lot of it there was just tons of it on a tree and uh, i got a bunch of it he said he'd get him some later and look at those just beautiful turkey tail this was just a beautiful bunch and uh, so i'm gonna dry these on top of the lion's mane I'm just going to lay them out here and get them dry. They won't take long at all, so they will be done way before the lion's mane. And then uh, once I get these dry, I will uh, put them in my alcohol and let them uh, go in there for um, probably a month. And then I'll try to do the dual extraction um, after that, so here we go. Isn't that beautiful? They are beautiful. So there you go. And the turkey tail is a very medicinal uh, mushroom. It is good for just tons of things. I, I, I probably can't even remember them all or name them all but it is an antibiotic, antiviral, uh, uh, just really good for about anything that ails you, um, and also good for inflammation and all that too. Uh, that's one reason I want it. I also will uh, use it. I, won't, I, I don't use this every day. I have turkey tail uh, tincture already. I don't use it every day. I usually use it if I'm really feeling bad or getting sick, and then I will use it and use like a dropper full uh, a couple times a day. So there you go. Okay, now this beautiful, beautiful chicken of the woods that we got um, at the same place, same time as the others. Uh, this is what uh, my friend found first and sent me a video of this first and uh, said, come on up and get you some. And so uh, I was going to visit and get some chicken of the woods. And then we found the other mushrooms that, uh, that I've shown. Uh, so the chicken of the woods was the first thing that I was going after. And he had found these, um, a bunch of them. He found a, a, just a ton of them on his property. And uh, some of them were a little dr more dried up than these. These are perfect. These are just beautiful and perfect. And some of the ones were starting to dry up. We had started picking some of those and then realized that these were just gorgeous. And we left the rest of them alone. I did bring some dried up ones home just to try 
to put them back here in my woods to see if some of them would maybe take back here. Um, we have these in our area, but we don't have any on our property. And I know it doesn't really work that way, but sometimes you can, uh, uh, like with some mushrooms, the spores will fall out. And uh, so I don't know that about chicken of the woods, but we thought it was worth a try. <clears throat> so <laughs> I do have a bunch of the drier, dried up ones to take back here. Um, but they had a more darker uh, bottom. The bottom of the mushrooms are way darker and the orange is not as vibrant on the dried up ones. But these are just absolutely, I mean, look at that, just beautiful. Now, there is not another one that looks just like Chicken of the Woods, so you're pretty safe with it. Just look on the back. It's got the smooth back, very smooth polypore with the just bright orange to yellow. Just beautiful, beautiful. So, these you can uh, cut up in um, strips and from just like chicken strips. Uh, you can um, uh, freeze, I've been told, I've never fr froze any before, but I've been told you can cut them and freeze them and then pull them out later and batter them and fry them just like chicken also. I've never tried that, but I'm gonna try that this time. You could also dehydrate them, which I'm gonna dehydrate some and uh, <clears throat> dehydrate them and then uh, break them up in little chunks or cut them up in little chunks to use in soup or casserole or whatever. Uh, pretty much tastes like fried chicken when you uh, batter them and fry them. And uh, so that's the only way I've ever eaten them was just battered and fried like fried chicken. And uh, But this time I'm going to do some different things with them because I have quite a few. This is only one of three bags. I have three bags full. Um, and I'm going to take one and just cut strips and put in the freezer. And uh, anyway, so that's what I'm doing with this. And uh, I will, uh, when I cut some up to fry it <clears throat> tonight, I'll add that onto this video. Okay, I am going to attempt <laughs> again to finish this video with the mushrooms that we found. Um, so I started this video a couple of days ago. It's been several days uh, because I hadn't been able to get back to uh, finish the uh, cooking, cooking the chicken of the woods mushrooms. Uh, so I still have them. They still look pretty good. Uh, there's a few of them that got soft on the outside edge, and I'll have to cut that off. Um, but I just couldn't, uh, I stuck these in the refrigerator and uh, done other things with some of it, you know, dehydrated some of it. I put some in the freezer to get out and try later. These I just stuck in the refrigerator and was going to uh, fry some up but I didn't get right back to it and right along the edge is a little soft on some of them. So I'll be trying to cut that out and uh, I'm going to flour them and fry them. So I'm gonna use some coconut oil in my cast iron skillet and uh, I'm just gonna flour them with regular flour. Um, I would use my carb quick because I'm trying to do low carb, but um, I, I want Lee to try them. I don't know if he will, we'll see. <laughs> uh, but I want Lee to try them and I want them to be really good. So I am gonna go ahead and use regular flour this time. I actually have uh, unbleached. I have an unbleached flour. Uh, I'll show you that in a minute. I'm gonna put some salt and pepper in it and that's all. I'm just gonna salt and pepper and flour them and fry them in coconut oil. So, let me get everything together. Uh, I'll get that flour out so I could show that. And, um, and we'll get this done. All right, so here's that flour. I just got this Arrowhead Organic All-Purpose Flour Unbleached. And hopefully that's a little better than all the bleached uh, stuff that you get nowadays. I'm trying to use 
uh, more natural things and not all the processed. We also get a raw sugar uh, that's uh, Moreno, I think is the name brand. It's a raw, uh, uh, just a raw sugar. It's not white, bleached white, you know, and this is not bleached white. So uh, there's no reason for all that. And, uh, and anyway, it helps a little. Anything you can do to be a little more natural and not all the processed stuff is better. <laughs> so that's what we're trying to do. All right, so I'm just gonna put a little flour in this big bowl up here. And uh, Lee uses that flour to make um, he makes um, fry bread and uh, uses that flour. He, he makes biscuits sometimes. Since I'm trying to be a little more low carb, he's not making as many biscuits uh, lately. I would love to have some biscuits though, so maybe I'll get him to go ahead and make some more. We have a video on his biscuits. He makes the best biscuits and we have a video on that. I will link that for you um, in the description or at the end of this video. So, uh, so I'm gonna get my coconut oil in here in the pan and, um, and get this salt and pepper and uh, then we'll uh, get it going and I'll finish this video up. So I just cut these up in uh, strips. Of course, I had to cut that back end off. Uh, like I said, they had gotten uh, soggy and I had to cut that back end off and I hate that, but just couldn't get back to this right away. <clears throat> so I cut them down about the size of maybe a chicken strip and uh, I'm just gonna roll them in this flour. I gave them a little salt and then I put salt and pepper in the flour and I'm just rolling them around in here good. There you go, it's all floured good. And um, so you could also batter if you liked battered uh, stuff, you could make a batter for this or you could roll it in uh, egg white or e egg, you know, egg wash or something and uh, make it make the uh, flour stick even better. I'm not gonna do that because I don't want a whole lot of flour on there like a batter um, because of my low carb situation. Okay, folks, so look here, I had a phone call. <laughs> I had a phone call while I was frying my food and um, I had to just finish frying it and talk on the phone. It wasn't a phone call I could get out of. So, so I had to finish this up while I was talking on the phone and uh, so you didn't get to see all that. But here's the finished product. These are fried um, chicken of the woods mushrooms. They just fry up. I didn't batter, like I said, I didn't batter, I just floured. So they don't have a whole lot of crust on there because I didn't want a lot of crust on there. And uh, so they just fry up, kinda look like chicken. I'm gonna say as far as taste, I've already ate one. Um, as far as taste, a lot of people say it tastes like fried chicken and it kind of does. And I think that maybe if you, I don't know, maybe you could season it more to where you would get a more fla more flavorful um, mushroom out of it. Uh, I just used salt and pepper and flour. So uh, I thought I could have done, um, you know, other spices, tahini or garlic. Garlic would be good on here. Uh, my, my mom and dad used to cook them and batter them. So battered is a whole different story. You've got a thicker crust and usually a more flavorful, but we, and we always dip them. So uh, I also could put some Franks on there. I love Franks. Franks would be good on there. <clears throat> Matter of fact, I might put a little Franks in my dipping sauce here. But what I have to dip in is some sugar-free Yum yum. Uh, you can get sugar free yum yum sauce at Walmart. And so I have some sugar free yum yum and I just put a little Franks in there and we'll do another taste test because I already tested it. <laughs> um, so it is, I, I'm going to say I like them a little better battered up with a thicker crust. 
but it's still good. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably should have had a little more salt, maybe. Like I said, some garlic would have been good. So, um, let's see. I'm going to try a little more of the Franks on there. Mmm. I love Franks. Mmm. Some kind of garlic dipping sauce would be great. The Franks is really good on there. Uh, as far as chicken, I don't know that it tastes like chicken. It, it, it could possibly taste like chicken, maybe. It's, it, but it's a little more plainer uh, even than chicken, especially maybe the way I cooked it up, maybe because I didn't use anything but salt and pepper and it could use a little more salt. Anyway, it's good y'all, it's really good. So there you go. We'll see later on how the frozen ones turn out. And good for you. And learn to forage, folks. You really need to learn to forage. Learn to use what's in your area, on your property, or around you, that you can go out and get and find and eat and use for medicine. Really, really important to learn to forage. So, we have a playlist. Uh, actually, we have two different playlists of foraging. And so you might wanna check those out. We cover a lot of things, medicinal and edible, and uh, just go check out our playlist. We have two of them at, that are about foraging. So please check those out. And, uh, and, and we don't really teach, we're not great teachers. We just really want people to be aware of the need to learn to forage. So, that's what ours is about. We show a lot of things that we forage and, uh, and all of our information is not as educational as some channels, but uh, we try to make it fun and we show you all the things we do and the importance of foraging and learning to forage in your area. So there you go. Um, thank you for watching. Give us a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe.